Good morning. Today we're going to analyze the force of tension as a function of time in a string attached to a dynamics card. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' physics. This is an extension of a lesson we did previously where we solved for the acceleration of and force of friction acting on a dynamics card. And we are going to use some of the information from that lesson. We know the cart has a mass of 0.613 kilograms. The mass hanging has a mass of 0.0550 kilograms. The acceleration of the cart after I release it is 0.786389 meters per second squared. And we have a graph of the force of tension as a function of time. There are three main parts of the motion we are going to analyze. Part one is highlighted in blue, is before I release the cart, and the system is at rest. During part one, the tension force is nearly constant. Part two is highlighted in red and is after I release the cart while the system is accelerating. For part two, the tension force decreases a bit and then remains rather constant while the system is accelerating. Part three is highlighted in yellow and is while I am catching the cart to slow it down. The tension during part three increases quite a bit and is not constant. Now, before we can analyze the situation, we need to draw free body diagrams. Notice there are actually two free body diagrams because there are two objects that are moving, the cart and the mass hanging. So we need to draw free body diagrams for both the cart and the mass hanging. Bo, could you please give me all the forces and their directions in both free body diagrams, and why don't we do it during part two while the system is accelerating? Sure. The forces on the cart are the force of tension to the right in the direction of the string, the force of gravity on the cart straight down, the force normal is perpendicular to the track and straight up, the force of friction is opposite the direction the cart is moving, so the force of friction is to the left, the forces on the mass hanging are the force of tension in the direction of the string, which is up, and the force of gravity on the mass hanging, which is down. I have several things to point out. First, we have two different forces of gravity, so we've identified them by subscripts, C for cart and H for mass hanging. So we have the force of gravity acting on the cart and the force of gravity acting on the mass hanging. Second, the free body diagrams don't change much from parts one to two to three. The only difference is that during parts one and three, there's a force applied by me on the cart to the left. Lastly, the force of tension in these two free body diagrams has the same magnitude because it is the same string, and the pulley has both mass and friction that are so small they are negligible. This won't always be true, but it is true today. Before we can start analyzing the situation using Newton's second law, we need to identify a direction. Notice how the cart and mass hanging move together. This is because they are attached by the string. Therefore, the cart and mass hanging have the same acceleration and therefore we call the cart and mass hanging the system. Normally the directions would be that the cart moves to the right, which is positive, and the mass hanging moves down, which is negative. However, because they have the same acceleration, they should have the same sign as well. So let's identify the direction the system moves as positive. You can see I added a curved arrow with a positive sign to show this. We will call this the string direction. Now, we are going to use Newton's second law. Remind me, Billy, what is Newton's second law? Net force equals mass times acceleration, where both force and acceleration are vectors. Let's sum the forces on the mass hanging in the positive direction during part one. Bobby, could you please sum the forces on the mass hanging in the direction of the string during part one, which is before I release the cart, and then solve for the tension force? The net force on the mass hanging uh, in the string direction during part one is equal to, well, the force of tension is positive because it's up, and the force of gravity is negative because it's down, so we get oh, the... Hold, hold up, Bobby. Re remember the direction of the string we just defined? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, so then the net force equals positive force of gravity on the mass hanging minus the tension force, which equals the mass hanging times acceleration. To solve for the tension force, add the tension force to both sides, 
and then subtract the mass hanging times acceleration, and we get uh, tension force equals the force of gravity on the mass hanging minus the mass hanging times acceleration, and uh, we can substitute in the equation for the force of gravity, which is the mass hanging times the acceleration due to gravity. We can take out the mass hanging because it's, it's the common factor, uh, and we get the tension force equals the mass hanging times the quantity uh, acceleration due to gravity minus the acceleration of the system. Uh, which is 0 0.055 times 9.81 minus uh, the acceleration. Uh, the acceleration is zero during part one because the system is at rest. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. You are welcome. Uh, so it's just 9.8 minus zero, uh, which is 0 0.53955, or with three sig figs, 0 0.540 newtons. The tension force of 0 0.540 newtons is our theoretical prediction. Let's see if it matches our experimental observation. The average measured tension force during part one is 0 0.540 newtons. So for part one, the theoretical prediction matches the experimental observation, which is good. Now let's move on to part two after I let go of the cart. Billy, could you please solve for the tension force in the string during part two by summing the forces on the mass hanging in the direction of the string during part two? Well, the free body diagram is the same, so then all the mass should be the same and we should get the same value for the tension force, right? <laughs> no, okay. So the, I agree, the free body diagram on the mass hanging is the same during part two as it is during part one. However, it will not yield the same force of tension when we solve part two. So please work your way through the solution for part two to figure out why. Okay, well, if the free body diagram is the same, then everything should be the same. Oh, oh wait, uh, everything is the same except the acceleration. The acceleration is no longer zero. It is 0 0.786389 meters per second squared. So then tension equals uh, 0 0.55 times uh, the quantity 9.81 minus the 0 0.786389, which works out to be 0 0.496299 uh, with three sig figs 0 0.496 newtons. Again, we can compare the theoretically predicted value for the force of tension of 0.496 newtons to the experimentally observed value, and you can see that they do not quite match. The experimentally observed value is 0.490 newtons, which differs by only six thousandths of a newton, which I think is pretty close. Let's analyze the third part, which is while I am stopping the cart. The third part is different from the first two because the tension force is not constant. So let's solve for something different. We know the maximum force of tension is 0.907 newtons. So let's use that value to determine the maximum acceleration of the mass hanging and cart while I am slowing the system down. Bo, could you please do that? Well, we need to sum the forces, so net force equals the... Uh... Bo, please remember to identify all the information about what you're summing the forces on. Okay, let's sum the forces on the hanging mass in the direction of the string during part three. Uh, the equation starts out the same, however, divide by the hanging mass and the acceleration equals the force of gravity of the hanging mass minus tension divided by the hanging mass. Substitute in the equation for force of gravity and numbers, you get 0 0.055 times 9.81 minus 0 0.907, all divided by 0 0.055 which is negative 6.680909, or negative 6.68 meters per second squared. It is important to point out that the acceleration we just found is the maximum acceleration, which is an instantaneous value, unlike the average values we figured out in part one and part two for the force of tension. So instantaneous acceleration, the acceleration at a specific point, the average force of tension, the force, average force over a time period. In addition to that, 
the acceleration we found out was negative, which simply means that the acceleration was opposite the direction the system was moving, so it is slowing the system down. So technically, we figured out the magnitude of the maximum acceleration, which was positive 6.68 meters per second squared. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.